Hello and welcome to the part 2 of the solution of a transportation problem having the situation of degeneracy that means the at the initial stage the number of occupied cells are 7 that is less than m plus n minus 1 that is 8 number of columns plus number of rows 5 plus 4 minus 1 equals to 8 that means there must be at least 8 occupied cells but in the solution suggested by the clerk which we treat as initial solution there are only 7 occupied cells so this is the situation of degeneracy and in the situation of degeneracy we cannot write all the ui and vj values so first of all we have to change the situation and for that purpose we have to select an empty cell as deemed occupied cells and then after satisfying this condition with the help of this deemed occupied cell that we can write all ui and vj values that we have already covered in the first part of the solution of this problem now and i am very sorry because of some unavoidable things that I had to discontinue the first solution at this stage. Now let's discuss everything in this and we have reached the stage where we need to calculate DIJ values for all empty cells and for this purpose now we need not to treat this cell as empty but this is our eighth occupied cell and in this way in the previous solution we wrote all the ui and vj values so now we can calculate all dij values let's first calculate that for 1b cell d for 1b that is 4 minus 0 plus 0 c minus u plus v 4 minus 0 equals to 4 now D for 1C cell, 9 minus U is 0 plus V is minus 2, that means 9 minus minus 2, that is 11, positive. D 1E, because D is occupied cell, 0 minus 0 plus minus 2. That is 0 minus minus 2, that is positive 2. Now it's turn of second row. Cell A is empty. D for 2A. C is 20 minus U is 2 and V is 6. 2 plus 6. That is 20 minus 8, that is 12. Again it is positive. The positive DIJ value shows that if we allocate any quantity to this cell the cost will increase by this much amount d to b c is 6 minus u is 2 and v is 0 so 2 plus 0 6 minus 2 4 again it is positive the cost will increase by rupees 4 per unit if we make any allocation to this cell D3C, 11 is C, minus 2 plus minus 2, that is 11 minus 0, 11. All the two remaining are occupied. So now it is turn of row 3, 3A, 7, C is 7, 7 minus U is 2 and V is 6 something different 7 minus 8 it is minus 1 dij value is negative that means this is not an optimal solution because if we make any allocation to this cell the cost will decrease by rupee 1 this is the interpretation of negative dij value let's calculate for other we can have some other negative values too d3b C is 1 minus U is 2, V is 0. The same thing is going to happen. 1 minus 2 minus 1. That means 
in this cell also if we make any allocation the cost transportation cost total transportation cost will decrease by rupee 1 per unit yes let's calculate for others 3 d 14 minus 2 plus 1 14 minus 3 positive the cost increase by rupees 11 if we make any allocation so no allocation there now it is turn of fourth row d4 c c is 12 minus u is 1 plus v is minus 2 that is 14 minus 1 minus minus 2 is minus 1 so it comes to 15 no it's not 14 but it is 12 i'm very sorry 12 minus minus 1 that is 12 plus 1 13 and again for d 4d 6 is c minus u is 1 plus 1 it is 6 minus 2 that is 4 again positive and the last 4e d 4e equals to 0 minus 1 plus minus 2 that is 0 minus minus 1 that is positive 1 all these cells have positive DIJ value so it is better not to allocate anything to that these cells but these two cells have negative DIJ values negative opportunity loss that means it is advisable to make allocation to this kind of cells that will decrease the total cost by this DIJ amount. Now we have to, to have the closed loop, we should select only one. Which out of these two select? Because DIJ value, values of both the cells are same. If they are different, then we have to select the cell with the higher amount with negative sign. Suppose this is minus 1 but this is minus 2. Then we have to select the cell with minus 2. Suppose some other cell has minus 3, minus 4 or minus 5. Then we have to select that cell instead of these two. So the cell with the DIJ value which is a greater amount with minus sign. Because that is the lowest possible list DIJ value mathematically. But here this is some exceptional case. Both the cells have same negative amount minus 1 minus 1. When what should be treated or taken as tiebreaker? The cost in that cell should be taken as tiebreaker. Here the cost is 7, here the cost is 1. Again, our objective is to minimize the cost. So we should select the cell with the minimum transportation cost in it. So we have to select or we need to select, we ought to select this cell instead of this. Yes? Okay. What to do? Very simple. As usual, we need to draw a closed loop from starting from this cell. How? First of all, it is not very easy to say determine the path because no rectangle or square is possible here. So somewhat unusual path will be there. At starting point, we have to put plus sign first we are going to reach here there we have to put minus sign then we are going to reach here where we have to put plus sign as we know that the turning point is always an occupied cell from there we are going to this cell where it is now turn of negative sign we are going to this cell where it is now down of plus sign we are going to this cell where it is turn of negative sign we cannot directly move to this cell diagonally we cannot move so we have to move to this cell where it is turn of plus sign again now see why should we treat an empty cell as deemed occupied cell for this purpose negative sign and now the loop is over so a unique
kind of shape is there now what we need we need to select the cell with minus sign and the lowest possible quantity which are the cells with minus sign yes let's start with starting point here it is minus sign and 30 here it is minus sign and 30 here it is minus sign and 20 here it is minus sign and epsilon and as we know that we have already discussed in part 1 epsilon is the minimum possible quantity but it is not zero it is greater than zero but so negligible that it doesn't affect the total cost this is something like that so epsilon will be added to all the cells with positive sign but as we know that it is so negligible that that will not affect the quantities written in the cells with occupied cells so all the quantities in the cells having positive sign are going to remain as they are but the epsilon will be shifted to this because here it is zero and zero plus epsilon will be epsilon and epsilon minus epsilon will be zero so now this cell will become empty cell and this cell will become occupied cell but with the sign of epsilon only i think it is better to have another table to show it to you because if i write anything in this table now it will not be actually say proper so i need to explain everything in the third part of the solution so we are again meeting in the third part that's it thank you very much